Hello and welcome to the Microsoft Megabyte. I'm your host, Brian Gavados, and guess what? Today, we're all about cheating. Cheat, cheat, cheaty, cheat, cheateroni, cheating. That is, of course, if you consider using technology to study more efficiently, stay organized, and save time cheating. Well, I don't, and neither do my three guests, Tony Hannity's Kyle Vanson and Alex Humble, each of whom have brought their favorite Microsoft 365 or Microsoft Office app feature for learners of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds. So here's what I'm saying. If you have stuff to work on in the Office apps, you're gonna wanna listen in for some serious magic that's about to be shared. Or take in the full experience with the video version of this episode to see these features in action. Just search for Microsoft Megabyte Podcast on YouTube and it'll come right up. Okay, gents, let's get right to it. Show us how you cheat, uh, work smarter. How are you guys? We're great. Good, good. just yeah. a bunch of good cheaters. <laughs> I don't know. So whenever we post stuff like this or share features like this, that is sort of the feedback, isn't it? We get a lot of people commenting, Plagiarism, this is cheating, cheating. bibliography stuff oh, is do, cheating. Yeah. And be why didn't I have this in schools? They wouldn't have yeah. allowed it. And I, I have to say, like, whenever I see those comments, I think about this must have been the way things were when the, cal when the electronic calculator first came around in schools. This must have been the same feedback when laptops first started coming into schools or when people were arriving in school with motor car instead of horse and buggy, that was cheating. They got on time soon. But look, we have our own motor car here and it's called the Microsoft Office Apps, Microsoft 365. So the task is we each want to show you our favorites. So we have demos ready to show off. We want you to take a look if you're on the video version and see what's going on. But uh, let's start off with uh, let's start off with you, Kyle, because I know you you are a um, a struggling artist, isn't that right? And a master struggling cheater. is the strongest word a, you could use and it's a, the most accurate word a struggling and cheating artist so <laughs> what 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 tip do you have for learners or students and again this goes beyond even students this is anyone using office apps what tip do you have to share we're going to talk about powerpoint i've got a 12 year old in the house she is doing more presentations in powerpoint than i ever had to do in my entire sure. school career uh, and starting much younger. And there's a tip I've got that'll take your presentation a little bit over the top, uh, but it does require that you have an amazing uh, touch device okay. uh, because I'm talking about inking inside of PowerPoint. Uh, so I'm going to, if you're following along in the video, we're gonna switch over to a demo. I've got a PowerPoint open. I'm picking up my Surface Slim Pen 2. There it is. Uh, and I've got my device here, right here uh, in a PowerPoint presentation. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's got... In fact, I want to talk about this already. This device, a Surface Laptop Studio, detected I detached the pen and PowerPoint switched to the draw tab in the ribbon nice. by itself. Nice. It knows what's up. So there's a multitude of tools in there ready to go in that draw tab in the ribbon, okay. different pens and highlighters. Uh, but what's really cool inside of PowerPoint is it will understand if you are trying to do uh, some shapes in your uh, document. So if you wanted to, this is a document all around uh, different uh, chemical compounds, and those are all different shapes. Those are hexagons and lines True. connecting one another, and it can add that personalized touch. So all I have to do is pick uh, the pen or color that I want and start drawing directly onto my my document on that okay, slide. I see that? So you're just drawing and with, if I do, the, with the digital, with the inking pen right now, you're just drawing directly on the screen, sure. Drawing right on the screen, I can pop the laptop studio into that uh, touch-friendly mode so I get a much better uh, angle on which to okay. rest my hand. And then I can just draw, you know, whatever shape I need and hit ink to shape, ink to circle shape. some ink with the lasso tool, and then hit the button to convert it into an actual shape. So instead of my hastily drawn, oh, it, scribbled I see. hexagons and squares, now I'm going to lasso it and turn it into actual shape, ink to shape, ink to shape, please. There, And then it turned it into an actual hexagon Boom. right there. Okay. Now that quickly. So that's become like an, uh, hmm. how do I describe this? What you've done is you've created like a custom icon, right? Like an actual piece of, uh, you can copy and paste that. You can probably resize it and move it all around because now you drew it. What? This is really interesting. Wait, how do you describe what this is? This is taking, it's like almost guessing what you meant to draw and then perfecting it. Well, it's like handwriting yes, and recognition. It, yeah. But, but it, 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 
It also produces a little ellipses menu that'll show you your original in case you want to go back to your, your hand-drawn shape or other options. Maybe a hexagon wasn't right and it misunderstood uh -huh. and was actually an oval or, or a circle. So it'll give you those other options. Uh, so that's one way to use it. You know, if you're building out your, your compounds in your chemistry document, but the way I really like it is just adding handwritten elements where if you need something to really pop uh, in a presentation. We've got this table uh, that shows uh, you know, organic decay over time, and there might be something oh, yeah. in that table you really want to call out. Everything so I'll that, switch so. to a red pen, circle that part, draw an arrow to it, and maybe hand write in the important okay. point that this is where you know, that organism died and started to fossilize. Okay. Well, you don't need to get so depressed. Or personal. Or personal. Yeah, you're talking about my personal life there fossilization occurs. So now it's handwritten in, and that might be enough to take it okay. over the top and show a personalized element in a presentation. That is quite nice, because I'm thinking, I don't know if a lot of people know, you can you are just drawing in your PowerPoint. Yeah, and it's not like a review element where it's notes that won't appear in the presentation. It will show up on your slide. And also, I select it. Now I can go into areas like the animations tab, and ink gets its own animation called replay mean? or rewind. All right, hold on. Okay, everyone. So he's you've drawn some stuff on your slide because you have a you have a an ink capable device. On, you're on a surface right now, but this would work on any ink capable device. And you've drawn ink elements on it, and now you're saying you can replay it. What is that? What like like replay you draw drawing it? Yes. I've what gone and selected time? those elements that I drew because there's suddenly elements on my slide. I go to the animations tab and there's brand new animations that won't apply for text or shapes. It's just for ink stuff oh. and it's replay or rewind. So replay makes it appear as I wrote it out. Oh. It's circling, drawing, showing my arrow. You can adjust the timing of this, change the order in which stuff appears and it shows just my handwriting. So if you want a handwritten element to appear in your slide, uh, you can have it. With just so a couple what, clicks. what this brings to mind to, to explain this to people who can't see it, I'm I'm thinking about those um, NFL um, football between yeah, yeah those, those between play highlights where where you're you're seeing the coaches draw out the the plays or you're seeing a recap of other people drawing on the actual field and they're showing what happened, who passed to where and who ran where. You're seeing the chronology of it, it happening in time in sequence, and so you can do that for your own powerpoints to make it well make your point powerfully. Sorry and if you're that. using PowerPoint, not as a presentation tool, but as like a, a, a tool for, for workshopping ideas with a group sure. or yeah. building out notes in a, a planning class or, or you're building out before the presentation, uh, as soon as you have ink on a slide in that draw tab, you'll see a button called ink replay and it will play back all of your ink as a video. Awesome. So you can see bit by bit as you added drawn elements, handwritten elements to that slide. So that's inking ah, in PowerPoint. That's very good. There's a lot to explore, uh, but it good. just takes presentations to that next level. To the next level. All right, excellent. Now, let this, so that's, power, that's one in PowerPoint. I think we have another one in PowerPoint. We love PowerPoint on this team. Um, Tony Hannity's, and you're usually on, on the Xbox side, so this is very fun to have you talking about PowerPoint because it's, uh, I can think of few things more opposite than Xbox and gaming than Microsoft Office. So first of all, thank you for doing this. Secondly, what do you want to show us? Well, there's a lot of PowerPoint that we go through on a daily basis with our positions, and there's yeah. plenty of people out there from extremely young to older who aren't very versed in doing presentations like this. Or maybe so, don't even, just don't like it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's also a possibility, right? Yeah. This, this performance is not for everybody, but sometimes you just have to do it. It's part of the job or it's part of schooling, okay. whatever, whatever okay. the case is. Yeah. Yeah. So, so with PowerPoint, the, the, there's this feature called Coach. And uh, Presentation Coach will walk you through in real time a, I guess, a rehearsal of you giving a presentation. You are so, saying, you're saying that PowerPoint, so this is if you have a Microsoft 365 subscription, that, right. that your PowerPoint app, like on your PC, on your Mac, has a consultant built into it? Is that what you're saying? Yes. To help you. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Let's see this work. This is my consultant. Um, his name is Jared. Oh, um, you get, you've given it a name. That's not Also creepy. does uh, jewelry Huge. on the weekends. Oh. Um, but anyways, yeah. So uh, we're, we're giving a presentation right now, of course, on Xbox. 
you know, yeah. we're getting away oh, okay. from so a little bit. So this is an of, actual presentation you've given on Xbox. I see. This, this is, is a presentation I've given on Xbox. Okay. Um, but, you know, I wanted to make sure that the the poignant uh, points and poignant points and the sure. uh, alliteration was all like working up to up to spec. So down here at the bottom here, we have something where it says start rehearsal to find the PowerPoint uh, uh, rehearsal coach. Oh. You can actually just type coach and it just populates right in the um, in, in the top what? bar. It's oh, really in nice. Bar, you can just type coach. Okay. You just type right. that in the search bar there and then is. she just populates he or she, whomever you want to, you know, yeah. um, uh, Jared, uh, given name to, and you just hit uh, start rec- uh, start rehearsing, and right there, it can tell that I have started. It's giving me a counter. It's listening. So, Wait, um, what? It's it's making sure that I'm I'm saying the right things at the right time. I can still click through my presentation uh-huh. as I would be, and if I. Say things like um, filler words or I have a long break. There you go. There's a great example. I try say? not to use too many filler words. Okay, it's okay. real time coaching. Everyone, everyone. So here's what's happening. Tony is now showing us a PowerPoint. He's like, he's rehearsing, basically, rehearsing mm-hmm. a presentation. And as he's doing it, he said, um, like that. And like a lot. it popped up. It literally popped up in real time. Uh, just, just so you know, you're using some filler words. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that filler words psychologically are something you're not aware that you're doing. You don't mm-hmm. hear it in yourself as you speak. So that is that is that's incredible. Not only that, that like built. at the end of the presentation, if, if I were to continue on with this whole presentation and everything uh, at the end of it, it will give me a summary of how well my <gasps> rehearsal went. Right. And it'll say things like, you know, grammatically, you were correct in saying these two words, uh-huh. but for impact, it's probably oh. better if you use this word instead. Uh, oh, so like if you say like, and that's why this feature is really cool. Another really mm-hmm. cool feature is this really cool feature. It's going to say, hey, right. uh, maybe instead of really cool, say uh, it will help you save time or right. do something important, anything right. else than really it's cool. Just don't that say really cool Tony. over and over. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've been using this off. I've been using it off and on. And yep. I had to use it last week, actually, for a presentation that we all did. And I'm glad it was there because it was just one of those extra back pocket uh, tools that you you never Absolutely. know when you're going to need it. Just help you polish it up. Yeah, Kyle. Mm-hmm. My favorite thing in Presenter Coach uh, counters uh, a, a hiccup as something that I struggle with in delivering PowerPoint presentations. And that's yes. sometimes reading directly from the slide. The presenter coach will also identify <gasps> really? when you're doing that, which means yep. it knows the content in your presentation this and can no identify, magical. you're kind of reading verbatim. Let it be visual aid for you and try you to stress those it. points in a different way. I told you, exactly. I told you there'd be Smart. some magic in here. This is this is witchcrafty magic. Is it cheating? Uh, people out there, you're going to be commenting and saying it's not fair. This is cheating. Guess what? This is refining. This is practicing. This is getting better. This is getting, it's still your content, right? Yeah. Tony isn't saying they're opening his mouth and there's some other person's words coming out. It's doing it. It's making it better for him to give his own presentation. That's fantastic, Tony. Thank you so much for that. Thank Jeez. you. Okay. Where are we going from here? Alex, what do you have for us? Well, I should have looked at that. That uh, we should have I should have talked to you guys about my features first because you know what? I too picked PowerPoint because when I think of That's school, fine. it's I really do think of PowerPoint because, yep. like one of you said, like kids today do a ton of PowerPoint. Like for me, I remember like the first uh, book report I did was about hammerhead sharks. I was very excited. I really wanted to talk about hammerhead sharks. It was the first time I used Word as like a third grader. I don't think I touched PowerPoint until I was in like eighth grade, maybe even high school. Mm -hmm. But now it's so, so very common. And Mm -hmm. if we're on our theme of it's, it seems like it might be cheating, but it's not. Let me put you in the frame of mind of think of all of the terrible PowerPoints that you've seen in your life. There's a phrase, it's called death by PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. It's not PowerPoint's fault. It's that presenter who just Maybe they read off the slides. Maybe they just have a slide for every thinking, single point. I'm thinking city council it's, meetings. I'm thinking yeah, financial yes. reviews. I'm thinking yes. I'm thinking new product launches from a small business. And you're just thinking, yeah. why did you just use a black and white? Te- why are you, you, there's no design on this at all. Ugh. And it's so, so very boring. So you can't forget one the of the things- wipe. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Just the ancient transition. <laughs> so one of the things I want, one of the things I wanted to show was uh, what, first of all, what, 
PowerPoint looks like now. So I'm going to switch to my overhead. So hopefully oh, cool. you can see yeah, that. Ooh, okay. Looks good. Fancy. Switch a light real quick. Ooh, yeah, even better. Bit better. Uh, okay, so this is this is PowerPoint. Uh, today it looks maybe a little bit different than you know if you haven't used it in a while. I'm showing uh, on our video just the what the start looks like for PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. See all my recent documents, everything I've been working on. But what I want to point out is a way that. You, know, you might think it's cheating, but really it's just making sure that your message is landing better. And that is templates. Uh, templates are a pre-created you know, PowerPoint document that gives you a theme, it gives you, you know, all sorts of design elements, and it lets you sort of jump into a PowerPoint without having to sit there and think, you know, what am I gonna put on here? Mm -hmm. yeah. In the past, I mean, I, I've paid for people to create templates yep. like these before, and yep. this is all part of your Microsoft 365 subscription. So I'll, I'll pick one of these. Uh, or actually, I'll let you guys decide. So we have Road Trip Photo Album, we have Psychedelic Vibrant, and we have Certificate of Completion. What do you want to do? <laughs> I mean, Road Trip. I mean, we when, kind of when have you to say when you say psychedelic, psychedelic. I yeah. mean, how yeah, I, I knew that's that what you wanted to yeah. do. So these are premium. These are templates that you get. These are extra polished, good, professional grade templates that you get because you're a subscriber for Microsoft 365. It makes your PowerPoint more Mobetta. So I can see right off the bat, yeah, it does live up to that that psychedelic Ooh. look. It's a little washed out here, but uh, it is really quite vibrant vivid, on, yeah. on the mm -hmm. screen here. Uh, you can see custom custom fonts, uh, quite a unique look here. And we've got a second slide as well for our timeline. So this could be a really great start to, I don't know, maybe what was a really great summer. But if you want to add even more, this is where a feature yeah. I like quite a bit comes in. Uh, and this is called Design ID. Ideas. So By the way, I think I think if this is worth noting that you are just using you're building a PowerPoint. You have not used a keyboard or a mouse yet at all. You, in fact, you haven't even used a pen, a digital pen. You've you've just been using your finger. Yeah, and and as you know, Brian, like I don't I don't actually use touch all that often mm -hmm. on these devices. So I'm not someone who's doing this all the yeah. time with touch. I, I commonly use a desktop, which is got yes. a mouse and a keyboard. But it's that easy. That I can just use, you know, use touch to do this. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that I like, you want to add additional slides, you can hit design ideas. And then it's a little tough to see, but over here on this right hand side, it's then presented me with a bunch of new design ideas. But I can make that even more interesting by adding a few photos in. <gasps> and as part of your Microsoft 365 Dang. subscription, you get stock photos as well. So you don't have to look for licensing, you don't have to go, you know, Browse around uh, on your search engine for something. Let me just pick a few. So you just, I, we just saw him click insert photos and then a drop down came up saying from stock images. So yep. in PowerPoint, go insert photos, stock images. And now you have a, a professional grade photo of some, a lifestyle shot of people wandering. Is that an, is what? that a cow? A cow. Is that an animal? A cow. Okay. I told you this, this is, is vibrant psychedelic. psychedelic. Farm. This, this is, is the si Shannon. most psychedelic cow I've ever seen. But it's also San Francisco, so you know that I mean it when I say well, psychedelic. Vibrance. California cows are happy cows. <laughs> oh yeah, that's so right. they, they truly are. That's what the marketing says. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are four, there's fourteen thousand and growing templates uh, that are that are all oh. you know created that are based off of, of yeah. um, you know like professional designs. Yep. Think about how long it would take, and I would say Kyle's probably the best slide designer on our team, and he's terrible. Cool. Yeah, and he's, he's, he's absolutely terrible. But to go through and to create even just a few of these as quickly as I can just tap through them, it's it's just a great yep. way to, to, you know, very quickly get started with a template and then add even more content that, you know, that's you amazing. need to get work or school done. It's so a really impressive a feature. That's cool. So that's a PowerPoint templates, but also design ideas, which is behind it. So you start with a great template because you don't know what you want to build your PowerPoint, what you want it to look like. All you know is that it needs to be a review of your quarterly performance for your dairy farm. Great. Uh, here we go. And then you start going in. You, I say, boy, I would really love a picture of a nice, pretty cow right now. I need a picture of a cow on this slide. Where am I going to find? Do I need to go take a picture of a cow? Insert stock images, professional grade photography of even livestock. That's amazing. That really is Fantastic. Okay, I uh, I have one to show. Watch. Oh, good. Watch. I was Ooh, going to ask goody. if you had one to share. I have one. Watch this. Let me hit a Look button over here and hope that something happens. <laughs> we'll let you know if something happens. Has anything? Yeah. Happened? Oh, yeah. things yeah. happened. Yes. Okay. That we map. See the, we see that's... you and the map. Isn't it's a that map. what a world? So that's not the yeah. feature though. I want to talk about not PowerPoint that's for a second. Let's talk about something we haven't talked about in a while. OneNote. 
Now, hey. OneNote is a part of, you know, all the Office apps and everything, but it's, a, it's just like all the other Office apps, you can get it on your, your phone, your tablet, your PC, your Mac, what have you. But OneNote is actually a free app. So it's a great l for all students, but it gets better with Microsoft 365 because you're able to sync it to that Microsoft account. And then you can use up to that full terabyte of storage for all of your notes. With, and those notes can have videos. Those notes can have pictures. Those notes can have all sorts of things. One step back from video, I think is even more important for a student most of the time is going to be audio. Remember, we, we've talked about mm. this feature for a little bit and it, it needs to get its prime time re-debut again. Because when I'm taking my American history class notes here, okay, here I am, I've just had my one note, which is like a three ring binder. So I'm learning all about the, uh, the, the, the great American experiment. Ooh, democracy and stuff. I'm taking <laughs> notes. I'm and taking stuff. notes in my in my American history class. Okay. But 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 my but my professor speaks so fast. You know, we've all had that kind of professor where they speak so fast and they're so passionate about stuff and you're missing some something important. In one note, I go to insert record audio. Watch and learn. Boop, boop. So I hit record audio and now you can see audio is recording. I have the little timer up there going. And so now it's recording everything. It's, that, that's not that's not too impressive. It's a dictaphone essentially, right? It's recording sure. things that are going on around me. Okay, great. But as I take notes, I'm going to say like, <laughs> what, what's so funny? What's so, I mean, just I the, the, the audience dictaphone. of the Megabyte podcast is definitely going to know what a, a dictaphone, dictaphone is, what a pictured dictaphone. in their mind. Listen, all right. Turn, you know, I have my abacus and my dictaphone room. handy. So <laughs> I talk about, Cheater. oh, Thomas Jefferson um, was super important. Okay, folks. Brian Next. is still recording in OneNote, but he is typing into <laughs> that typing field notes. right now Thomas as Jefferson it's recording. Was super important. Um, Very important oh, to know what's happening. Oh, Mad King George wasn't so happy. That's for sure. Just type and taxation re representation notes. and we can wrap up. Taxation representation. And now I hit stop. And important T. middle word. Mr. Ah, okay. So I've recorded the audio. I have the audio file right here in my OneNote file, but that's not what's so impressive. To me, what's so impressive are two things. One, I can go through my notes and there's a little play button that pops up next to my notes. And I can say, ooh, what was the audio that I recorded when I typed the note, Mad King George wasn't happy? Let's hit play and find out. Typing notes. Thomas Jefferson was super important. Um, oh. I can hear you can it. See, Mad King can you hear it? George. Yeah, we can hear it. You can see that it's highlighting my notes that yeah, I wrote sure. as the audio plays. This mm -hmm. is game changing for students. This is, means if you're, if this was a two hour long lecture, I can scroll through and see like, geez, what was it I talked about when we talked about, you know, the Louisiana purchase or whatever. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that's right. Okay, great. That is all right there. And it gets one step mo magico, mo magico. Hmm. I type audio and video settings right here and I can select an option that says enable searching audio and video recording for words. So if Whoa, I click that, I didn't know about this. If I click that, I say enable audio search. It takes a while. It'll go through all of your all of your audio recordings. And when your computer is idle in the background, it'll start, uh, you know, um, going through it and identifying words and stuff. So I hit OK. And now if I two months later, when it comes time for finals, I can search for the word Louisiana purchase in my okay. OneNote, and it will come up with the audio recording where the professor said Louisiana purchase. You didn't write Louisiana Purchase. He you said Louisiana it. Purchase. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Okay. That is the power that is cool. of OneNote. So That's use cool. OneNote. Use all these features. We got three PowerPoints and one OneNote feature that are, some would say, cheating. We think it's the way to get stuff done and to really save time. And um, I don't know. Save your own stress. Jeez, enjoy your life. You're, you're, you're a student. You're learning. Maybe you're an educator. Maybe you just are in a lot of meetings and this stuff's going to be valuable for you. We sure hope so. Right, guys? Right? 100%. Yeah. We do. All right. For you. We do. Hey, we're going to do another one of these. And we're going to talk about some other features outside of Microsoft 365. So stay on the... Um, stay on internet? The, uh, in, uh, no. Stay on the internet. internet. Stay on the... Stay, stay on target? Feed. Thing at feed, RSS, stay uh, on the feed. Just, can you fade us out? Can you end the episode and fade us out? Stay, stay on the pulse. The pulse. Keep, keep your pulse. wagon. Keep your ears on no, the pulse. No. Get off. No, he's off the wagon. Those are great features. Really great. I'll get it to the source.
What's This has been the Microsoft Megabyte Podcast, a training tool for Microsoft field team members and sales professionals across the country, produced by Microsoft employees.